scoring the players. How would you rate Martin Dubravka, Rob? Oh, two brilliant saves in that first half. Certainly kept us in it. Prevented us from going into half-time losing. Um, a little bit at times just felt that he could have been a little bit quicker or so. And uh, also Ings' goal. Um, it's not really quite in the corner, but I think Fabian Scher is predominantly the one to blame on, on Ings' goal. So I'd say uh, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Let's go right wing back. Have your man killed, Johnny. Um, I think the defence had a really tough afternoon to be honest for most of the game but I thought he was one of the brighter lights I think he was winning free kicks especially in the second half I didn't think he was poor by any stretch I think at the many he is our best right back at the club um, and he seems to have a bit more of an understanding down that right hand side with, um, with Al Miron even in the first half when we weren't playing as well it was kind of showing signs of doing uh, doing something but um, yeah I'll, I'll go 7 out of 10 I don't think anybody was spectacular today that leaves me nice on the one of the goal scorers, which was Federico Fernandez. Uh, Johnny's just touched upon that. I think most of the defenders are all going to score similar. Um, so that happened, bro- broke our backline quite a lot, breaking through in particular, I thought, quite a lot. Uh, scored the goal, which was the match winner, of course. So we can't really knock him too down, but uh, because he scored the winner, I'm going to give him an eight. He got him. Because he scored the winner. If he didn't, I'd probably score him a seven, but eight for me. Um, and then the, the central defender, who I've got it was, Kevin Clark. Kevin Clark. Half. Yeah, only played in that first half. Um, I hope he's not injured or anything. Um, but yeah, fairly solid. Did what was expected of him. Nothing, nothing really much more than that. So uh, I'd say six. A six. Uh, Paul Dummett? Um, solid enough. I didn't do anything spectacular. Didn't get that crunch and pulled on a tackle, which you normally seem to get at St. James's Park. But um, I thought it was steady enough. I thought he, he had slight issues with um, Ginepro and Redmond's pace. I think was I think everyone's surprised how quick he was. I think he... Because normally with his pace, he wingers, Dummett can still kind of keep up with him. But there was times that Redmond was still still getting the better hand of him but um, again I, I don't think you can go anything higher or lower than a 7 I think that's probably a fair mark I left Jeffrey Williams actually for I had a poor game I know he's been great recently but I probably scored Jetro a six. I thought he nearly, yeah. Southampton nearly scored. You talked about Dubravka, say, before, mm, when yeah. Willem square pass and Southampton were on the break and they nearly score from it. But off his face, didn't it? Yeah, I just thought he was quite very was, lethargic today and going forward. He wasn't was spectacular. He was all right, but a steady six out of ten. Yeah. And let's move to, uh, let's, well, we'll go across right, left, Almiron. Almiron, excellent today. Uh, first of all, nine out of ten. A nine? Yeah. I think had it not been for Carroll being the game changer, um, Miggy would have been my man of the match. Um, Johnny ev- shaking his head. <laughs> ev- everything Almiron did today Why? Was, Why? was excellent. I, I, yeah, I get his effort. I get defensively he was. I don't think he warranted nine. I think maybe an eight or a seven or an eight. But I, what he had one half chance, which he should have done better with when Almiron. Uh, not Almiron. When Sam Austin crosses the ball, but apart from that, he did nothing going forward. Um, Rob, you had the deciding factor. He kept chances alive for me. For me, like there, there, there were times when Southampton, you know, the ball was in their court and everything. I'm not he, 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 was fine. he kept he kept chances alive. Your call? I'd, I'd say it's nine. Nine, yeah. okay. John Joe Shelby. I thought he was brilliant today. I really did. I think he, I think he was um, again. He's loving. I think the armband. I think he really gets it. I think he really enjoys. I'm it. Yeah, well, I think he is. I, th- I think at the minute he's just. He, he, I think he enjoys the the fact that he has the the leadership or expect maybe a expect a five goals more. now. Yeah, and leading goal scorer, great header, great fantastic cross from Carroll, which we'll touch upon in a second. But I just thought he kind of galvanised. He was he saw a little bit more. I don't know. The momentum was coming from him, and it kind of started from him. He was, he's getting spraying his balls a little bit better. But he seems to be flourishing under Bruce, where he wasn't really getting the chance towards the end of Rafa's reign. So yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. I don't think I would have gone as high as I have. But no, with the Almira mop, I'm going to give. I'm going to give Shelby a nine for the goal. I think he changed the game a little bit, but will somebody else change it a bit more? Yeah, we all know who that is. Uh, Isaac Hayden, his partner in midfield. I thought Shelby goes the better out of the two. Hayden was all right. Didn't see enough defensively, but I thought that happened broke quite a lot. And I thought Hayden. I'm not going to point it on him, but I thought he struggled in the game, but. If we are scoring high, I'll give him a seven. I think he'd done all right. Yeah. But I think yeah. Hayden, Shelby's took that role in that centre midfield out the two of them of late. And we've been seeing all season that Sh- Hayden's first choice. 
Question mark now. Is he now? Is Shelby first choice? Let us know in the comments. Uh, let's go to Alan St. Maximin. Absolutely love him. Love him to bits. And we saw at the end of the Sheffield United game that his ankle was all iced up and everything. Well, we were worried, weren't we, before? Yeah, we'd, we, yeah, we saw him in the warm-up and you could clearly tell that something wasn't right with that ankle of his. Um, but luckily, played the full 90 minutes and he, he, he just threatens and threatens and threatens and creates and creates and creates with that pace of his put it to good use today um i'd say i'd say eight for me oh you got joe Litton. oh look at you <laughs> i defended him quite a lot last week because i th- i think of you know, the opposition that he was up against and i thought well he's not he's going to get scraps at the best of times against a team that let notice is better southampton that you would think yeah how well let's see what you're made of come on that's that is where you get your goal this is where you break mm. your duck from how many games since the Tottenham game which seems like a lifetime ago now woeful it was really bad a day for him I think it just seemed nothing could work he just wasn't communicating I just don't think he had the fight the battle I just thought he just he, I think he thinks that his place is his that he's guaranteed a start and I think maybe the shock of Carroll starting on Thursday has just dented his confidence even more he doesn't start next week for me um, Carol has to start next week. He just, there was just nothing coming off from. Like I think one of the last things that happened before he got substituted, I think there was, I think Almiron and him kind of ran at the same ball. Even the ninety nine percent of the of Newcastle fans knew that was Almiron's ball. And when he, Almiron flicks it on, he's like looking around, going, "Well, you're meant to be there." Mm. Um, I don't, I, this is tough. I'm, I'll go two. Wow, that I'll low. Go two. Wow. I, 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 if anybody can tell me what he did otherwise, and considering last week I gave him, I think I gave him a seven last week against Manchester City, and where he didn't have a shot on goal against Southampton, I think he did less than that. And I think I think Southampton were going, this is an easy day afternoon. As soon as Carroll came on, they gone, I'd rather not. If anybody can explain why he should get more than a two, I think I'm even being generous with a two here. Let us know in the comments. I'm sure we'll talk about in the last word a little bit more as well. Uh, let's move to the subs. You've got Fabian Cher. No, actually, I'll do Fabian Cher since he's yeah. my man. Uh, mm-hmm. Elegant man and all that. I actually thought he was poor today, and I hate saying that mm-hmm. because I love this guy. Uh, he was a fault for the goal. You can't really pinpoint no one else. I don't know what happened where you've mentioned on the way down. Has he got a shout? Just headed out. If he heads it out, so I'm doing score. It's as simple as that. And then they go and break through. Should Bravka do better? Maybe, but... It's Fabian Shea for me, so five out of ten because he cost us a goal today. Um, who would like Andy Carroll? Go on, Rob. You're next. Are you sure? Man. Yeah, go on. You're you, next. you had Joel. I'll let you have it because you had Joel Linton. It's, t- it's time you. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. You're too kind. Change the game. I am. Change the game. Man of the match up with Debravka for me. I think Debravka had a fantastic game. Kept us in at first half, but he just galvanised the whole place, didn't he? Like it was a much better performance than it was against um, Southampton. Uh, sorry, Sheffield United rather on Thursday. Got the assist. I couldn't believe the free kick. What a cross. It was a fantastic yeah, no. cross. But when the fr- when the free kick, when Mickey wins the free kick, I was thinking, why has he gone for that sort of cross by Shelby? Mm-hmm. And he felt like I was having a right go. And as soon as it crosses, it crosses it in, it's a fantastic cross. But he has got that in his locker. I have, I have seen mm-hmm. an Andy Carroll cross like that before where he, he has. Isn't it funny how strikers always seem to be the best cross? So she raced, always have a hell of a cross on him. I think because they know what they want. Yeah. And then Carroll yeah. knows what he wants, and um, it was a fantastic ball. Like there was three Newcastle players that could have scored that cross, and you know it, it, he made Southampton's defenders work ridiculously hard. He did more than thirty minutes or thirty-five minutes, and Joe Linton did for seventy or sixty-five or however however long he was on. He just he made it hard work. He was getting Almiron at the, the game. He was getting Saint Maximin in the game. He was winning every first header. Southampton just didn't really know what to do. He was unplayable at times. I think the only thing I'm not the reason why I'm not giving him a ten is because he didn't score, yeah. and that's why I'm going to give him give him a nine. But he has to, Stupers has to start him next week against Burnley. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, I think we're all in agreement on this table that he's a uh, uh, man of the match. Uh, Sean Longstaff. Yes, he might not have been on for long, but his shot did cause yeah, exactly. the spillage to come back out. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's a six for me. I, oh, I, go on, go seven. I'm, no way. I'm usually one that says like if if they didn't make an impact, then I would go for five. That's between. But did he not make an ten. impact on the goal? Oh yeah, that's why I'm giving him one more than five. I, I'm, I'm with I'm with Lee on this one because <laughs> I think only him or Shelby would have that shot where they where they are. And Hayden wouldn't done one. I don't think he would. And do you know what is? How many times do you see before they before they play that they have shots around about that area? Mm. And the good thing that he did 
is that he managed to get it to bounce before yeah. uh, he kept it low. McCarthy gets a hand with it because greasy service, he's going to have to push it away. I think I've always said that will be a bit disappointing that he hasn't pushed it away for a corner. But it's... Are we overruling him? Well, feel free, feel free. Feel free. Overruling, I'm sorry, Rob, but over, we're overruling him now because he played a part in the goal. So that's scoring the players uh, coming up on the next video later at night. Uh, we have, oh yes, forgot about Steve Bruce. How can we forget about Steve? 10 out of 10. He's got to oh, be it. But no, let's, yeah, let's talk yeah. about a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, I thought the game in general was shocking to watch. We went 1-0 down from a mistake from Fabian Shea, which was the substitution I presume it'll be for an injury of Kieran Clark. You would have thought so. But I think you realised that Joe Linton's not working here. This isn't working. He's got the guts and the balls to pull him out early on and bring Carroll in. And then we've seen a Carroll was a game changer. So I'm going to applaud Steve Bruce's tactics once more. You noticed it. Some people might say you've got to bring Gale on to go two up top. That's probably another argument because Gale's not getting a look in. But... It just seemed to work. There was a, the tempo went up a notch. Crosses were coming in. He was getting himself about, sliding challenges, running back. Carroll changed the game for me. He did, but you got to give credit to the fact he brings Longstaff on as well. He, he, he changed it little, sort of, uh, subtly a little bit. He got say Maxman up front with Carroll, mm. and he, he pushed uh, Valems a little bit more to the left, and he got long he got Longstaff gone in. You can have a bit more space in the middle. Hayden pushed up a, a tiny bit more, and it just seemed to work a little bit. But um, no, I've, look. If someone said to you, like, we all did predictions of what we were, how many points we were going to get last week. And I think no, I said four. None of us said six. None so, of us, well, seven points from the last three games. That's three, yeah. yeah. But, no one, but no one said that we'd get two two wins from the Thursday and the Sunday game. Mm. So you've got to give Steve Bruce a heck of a lot of credit. Yes, it wasn't as pretty as the game against Sheffield United, but he made the changes just about at the right time. And I think, we've, yeah. I think you've got to... If, if we're basing on the two games, you've got to give tens, considering... We didn't play as well. We and expected so to get lucky, something. I would probably go nine out of ten today. I'll probably agree because we expect something to yeah. get something from a day, and we we turned a zero to three points. So he scores high. Would you go along with that? Oh yeah, definitely a nine. Yeah, I completely agree with what you said. Cool. Right, I will wrap up this time. So yeah. we'll do it this time proper. Uh, coming up, we've got the final word. Obviously, go behind the scenes with the match vlog, which was earlier on. And of course, if you haven't checked Kyle's quick thoughts out, they are already out on the channel. Say so, yes, goodbye. Yeah.